Hello. Welcome to the Study With Me series of Law School Buddy. I have prepared audiobook materials following the syllabus of the Philippine bar exams dedicated to our law school students. I hope that this audiobook can help with your study and review. Let's begin. Chapter 4. Conjugal Partnership of Gains. Section 1. General Provisions. Article 105. In case the future spouses agree in the marriage settlements that the regime of conjugal partnership gains shall govern their property relations during marriage, the provisions in this chapter shall be of supplementary application. The provisions of this chapter shall also apply to conjugal partnerships of gains already established between spouses before the effectivity of this code, without prejudice to vested rights already acquired. In accordance with the civil code or other laws, as provided in Article 256, Article 106, under the regime of conjugal partnership of gains, the husband and wife place in a common fund the proceeds, products, fruits and income from their separate properties and those acquired by either or both spouses, through their efforts or by chance, and, upon dissolution of the marriage or of the partnership, the net gains or benefits obtained by either or both spouses shall be divided equally between them unless otherwise agreed in the marriage settlements. Article 107. The rules provided in Articles 88 and 89 shall also apply to conjugal partnership of gains. Article 108. The conjugal partnership shall be governed by the rules on the contract of partnership and all that is not in conflict with what is expressly determined in this chapter or by the spouses in their marriage settlements. Section 2. Exclusive property of each spouse. Article 109. The following shall be the exclusive property of each spouse. 1. That which is brought to the marriage, as his or her own. 2. That which each acquires during the marriage, by gratuitous title. 3. That which is acquired by right of redemption, by barter or by exchange with property, belonging to only one of the spouses, and 4. That which is purchased, with exclusive money of the wife or of the husband. Article 110. The spouses retain the ownership, possession, administration and enjoyment of their exclusive properties. Either spouse may, during the marriage, transfer the administration of his or her exclusive property to the other, by means of a public instrument, which shall be recorded in the registry of property, of the place the property is located. Article 111. A spouse of age may mortgage, encumber, alienate or otherwise dispose of his or her exclusive property without the consent of the other spouse, and appear alone in court to litigate with regard to the same. Article 112. The alienation of any exclusive property of a spouse, administered by the other, automatically terminates the administration over such property, and the proceeds of the alienation shall be turned over to the owner's spouse. Article 113. Property donated, or left by will to the spouses, jointly and with designation of determinate shares shall pertain to the donee's spouses as his or her own exclusive property, and in the absence of designation, share and share alike, without prejudice to the right of accretion when proper. Article 114. If the donations are onerous, the amount of the charges shall be borne by the exclusive property of the donee's spouse whenever they have been advanced by the conjugal partnership of gains. Article 115. Retirement benefits, pensions, annuities, gratuities, Usufrux and similar benefits shall be governed by the rules on gratuitous or onerous acquisitions, as may be proper in each case. Section 3. Conjugal Partnership Property. Article 116. All property acquired during the marriage, whether the acquisition appears to have been made, contracted or registered in the name of one or both spouses, is presumed to be conjugal unless the contrary is proved. Article 117. The following are conjugal partnership properties. 1. Those acquired by onerous title during the marriage, at the expense of the common fund, whether the acquisition be for the partnership or for only one of the spouses. 2. Those obtained from the labor, industry, work or profession of either or both of the spouses. 3. The fruits, natural, industrial, or civil, do or received during the marriage, from the common property as well as the net fruits from the exclusive property of each spouse. 4. The share of either spouse in the hidden treasure, which the law awards to the finder or owner of the property, where the treasure is found. 
5. Those acquired through occupation, such as fishing or hunting. 6. Livestock existing upon a dissolution of the partnership in excess of the number of each kind, brought to the marriage by either spouse, and 7. Those which are acquired by chance, such as winnings from gambling or betting. However, losses are from shall be borne exclusively by the loser spouse. Article 118. Property bought on installments, paid partly from exclusive funds of either or both spouses, and partly from conjugal funds, belongs to the buyer or buyers, if full ownership was vested before the marriage, and to the conjugal partnership. If such ownership was vested during the marriage, in either case, any amount advanced by the partnership, or by either or both spouses, shall be reimbursed by the owner or owners upon liquidation of the partnership. Article 119. Whenever an amount, or credit payable within a period of time, belongs to one of the spouses, the sums which may be collected during the marriage in partial payments, or by installments on the principal, shall be the exclusive property of the spouse. However, interests falling due during the marriage on the principal, shall belong to the conjugal partnership. Article 120. The ownership of improvements, whether for utility or adornment, made on the separate property of the spouses, at the expense of the partnership or through the acts or efforts of either or both spouses, shall pertain to the conjugal partnership, or to the original owner spouse, subject to the following rules. When the cost of the improvement, made by the conjugal partnership, and any resulting increase in value, are more than the value of the property at the time of the improvement, the entire property of one of the spouses, shall belong to the conjugal partnership, subject to reimbursement, of the value of the property of the owner spouse, at the time of the improvement, otherwise, said property shall be retained in ownership by the owner spouse, likewise subject to reimbursement of the cost of the improvement. In either case, the ownership of the entire property, shall be vested upon the reimbursement, which shall be made at the time of the liquidation of the conjugal partnership. Section 4. Charges upon and obligations of the conjugal partnership. Article 1 to 1. The conjugal partnership shall be liable for 1. The support of the spouse, their common children, and the legitimate children of either spouse. However, the support of illegitimate children shall be governed by the provisions of this code on support. 2. All debts and obligations contracted during the marriage by the designated administrator spouse for the benefit of the conjugal partnership of gains, or by both spouses or by one of them with the consent of the other. 3. Debts and obligations contracted by either spouse, without the consent of the other, to the extent that the family may have benefited. 4. All taxes, liens, charges, and expenses, including major or minor repairs, upon the conjugal partnership property. 5. All taxes and expenses, for mere preservation made during the marriage, upon the separate property of either spouse. 6. Expenses to enable either spouse to commence or complete a professional, vocational, or other activity for self-improvement. 7. Anti-nuptial debts of neither spouse of litigation so far as they have redounded to the benefit the of the family. Is found to groundless. 8. The value the of what is donated or promised by both spouses to cover the foregoing liabilities of the common the spouses shall be solidarily liable commencing for the unpaid balance professional with their or vocational properties. course or other activity for self-improvement, and Article 122. The payment of personal debts, contracted by the husband or the wife, before ordering the marriage, shall not be charged to the conjugal properties partnership except, insofar as they redounded to the benefit of the family. Neither shall the fines and pecuniary indemnities imposed upon them be charged to the partnership. However, the payment of personal debts, contracted by either spouse before the marriage, that of fines and indemnities imposed upon them, as well as the support of illegitimate children of either spouse, may be enforced against the partnership assets after the responsibilities enumerated in the preceding article have been covered. If the spouse, who is bound should have no exclusive property, or if it should be insufficient, but at the time of the liquidation of the partnership, such spouse shall be charged, for what has been paid for the purpose above mentioned. Article 123. 
whatever may be lost during the marriage, in any game of chance or in betting, sweepstakes, or any other kind of gambling, whether permitted or prohibited by law, shall be borne by the loser, and shall not be charged to the conjugal partnership. But any winnings therefrom shall form part of the conjugal partnership property. Section 5. Administration of the Conjugal Partnership Property. Article 124. The administration and enjoyment of the conjugal partnership shall belong to both spouses jointly. In case of disagreement, the husband's decision shall prevail, subject to recourse to the court by the wife for proper remedy, which must be availed of within five years, from the date of the contract implementing such decision. In the event that one spouse is incapacitated or otherwise unable to participate in the administration of the conjugal properties, the other spouse may assume sole powers of administration. These powers do not include disposition or encumbrance, without authority of the court, or the written consent of the other spouse. In the absence of such authority or consent, the disposition or encumbrance shall be void. However, the transaction shall be construed as a continuing offer on the part of the consenting spouse and the third person, and may be perfected as a binding contract upon the acceptance by the other spouse or authorization by the court before the offer is withdrawn by either or both offers. Article 125. Neither spouse may donate any conjugal partnership property without the consent of the other. However, either spouse may, without the consent of the other, make moderate donations from the conjugal partnership property for charity or on occasions of family rejoicing or family distress. Section 6. Dissolution of Conjugal Partnership Regime Article 126. The conjugal partnership terminates 1. Upon the death of either spouse 2. When there is a decree of legal separation 3. When the marriage is annulled or declared void or 4. In case of judicial separation of property during the marriage under Articles 134 to 138 Article 127. The separation in fact between husband and wife shall not affect the regime of conjugal partnership, except that 1. The spouse who leaves the conjugal home, or refuses to live therein, without just cause, shall not have the right to be supported. 2. When the consent of one spouse to any transaction of the other is required by law, judicial authorization shall be obtained in a summary proceeding. 3. In the absence of sufficient conjugal partnership property, the separate property of both spouses, shall be solidarily liable for the support of the family. The spouse present shall, upon petition in a summary proceeding, be given judicial authority to administer or encumber any specific separate property of the other spouse and use the fruits or proceeds thereof to satisfy the latter's share. Article 128. If a spouse without just cause abandons the other or fails to comply with his or her obligation to the family, the aggrieved spouse may petition the court for receivership for judicial separation of property, or for authority to be the sole administrator of the conjugal partnership property, subject to such precautionary conditions as the court may impose. The obligations to the family, mentioned in the preceding paragraph, refer to marital, parental or property relations. A spouse is deemed to have abandoned the other when he or she has left the conjugal dwelling without intention of returning. The spouse who has left the conjugal dwelling for a period of three months, or has failed within the same period, to give any information as to his or her whereabouts, shall be prima facie presumed to have no intention of returning to the conjugal dwelling. Section 7. Liquidation of the Conjugal Partnership Assets and Liabilities. Article 129. Upon the dissolution of the conjugal partnership regime, the following procedure shall apply. 1. An inventory shall be prepared listing separately all the properties of the conjugal partnership and the exclusive properties of each spouse. 2. Amounts advanced by the conjugal partnership in payment of personal debts and obligations of either spouse shall be credited to the conjugal partnership as an asset thereof. 3. Each spouse shall be reimbursed for the use of his or her exclusive funds in the acquisition of property or for the value of his or her exclusive property the ownership of which has been vested by law in the conjugal partnership. 4. The debts and obligations of the conjugal partnership shall be paid out of the conjugal assets. In case of insufficiency of said assets, 
the spouses shall be solidarily liable for the unpaid balance with their separate properties in accordance with the provisions of paragraph 2 of Article 121. 5. Whatever remains of the exclusive properties of the spouses shall thereafter be delivered to each of them. 6. Unless the owner had been indemnified from whatever source, the loss or deterioration of movables used for the benefit of the family, belonging to either spouse, even due to fortuitous event, shall be paid to said spouse from the conjugal funds, if any. 7. The net remainder of the conjugal partnership properties shall constitute the profits, which shall be divided equally between husband and wife, unless a different proportion or division was agreed upon in the marriage settlements, or unless there has been a voluntary waiver or forfeiture of such shares provided in this code. 8. The presumptive legitimes of the common children shall be delivered upon the partition in accordance with Article 51. 9. In the partition of the properties, the conjugal dwelling and the lot on which it is situated shall, unless otherwise agreed upon by the parties, be adjudicated to the spouse, with whom the majority of the common children choose to remain. Children below the age of seven years are deemed to have chosen the mother, unless the court has decided otherwise. In case there is no such majority, the court shall decide, taking into consideration the best interests of said children. Article 130. Upon the termination of the marriage by death, the conjugal partnership property shall be liquidated in the same proceeding for the settlement of the estate of the deceased. If no judicial settlement proceeding is instituted, the surviving spouse shall liquidate the conjugal partnership property, either judicially or extrajudicially, within six months from the death of the deceased spouse. If upon the lapse of the six-month period, no liquidation is made, any disposition or encumbrance involving the conjugal partnership property of the terminated marriage shall be void. Should the surviving spouse contract a subsequent marriage without compliance with the foregoing requirements, a mandatory regime of complete separation of property shall govern the property relations of the subsequent marriage. Article 131. Whenever the liquidation of the conjugal partnership properties of two or more marriages contracted by the same person before the effectivity of this code is carried out simultaneously, the respective capital, fruits and income of each partnership shall be determined upon such proof as may be considered according to the rules of evidence. In case of doubt as to which partnership the existing properties belong, the same shall be divided between the different partnerships in proportion to the capital and duration of each. Article 132. The rules of court on the administration of estates of deceased persons shall be observed in the appraisal and sale of property of the conjugal partnership and other matters which are not expressly determined in this chapter. Article 133. From the common mass of property, support shall be given to the surviving spouse and to the children during the liquidation of the inventory property and until what belongs to them is delivered, but from this shall be deducted. That amount received for support, which exceeds the fruits or rents pertaining to them. And that is the end. If this audiobook has helped you, please comment down below and like and share our video to someone who might need it. For more study with me sessions, please subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much for making us your law school buddy.